Oh, hello. What is up? Oh, my goodness. A podcast from Eric Helwig. So many of you are like, when was this going to happen? I know there's hundreds of you, thousands of you maybe wondering what it would take for me to talk into a microphone by myself for 30 minutes every two weeks. All it took was a world pandemic. So count yourselves lucky. Listen, every podcast needs a great intro song. What's playing now? This isn't an intro song. Right? This is just some bullshit music and me talking. But we need a podcast intro song for bringing the backups. That's my show about backup quarterbacks. Is that niche enough? They say find your niche. I say find your niche, cut it in half, and then multiply it by point zero two. So that four people will want to listen to your podcast. That's what I've done here. And listen, I've got an intro song. I made this song. It's for you guys, right? I think this captures the vibe of the show. I made it here in quarantine. So get ready for it. My intro podcast song starts now. Comedy. Sports. Satan. Bring in the backups with Eric Helwig, a podcast about backup quarterbacks. Enjoy and see you in hell. <laughs> yeah, you know, on listening back to that, I'm realizing I'm kind of in a dark place during quarantine. Right? I may have made that song while dancing in a blood pentagram, so let's try a different intro. I made a second one, all right? And I think this one might capture the essence of the show a little bit better. Welcome in, sexy people. Know that while you may be backups in the field, you're starting tonight in the bedroom. You also may have noticed I said people. That's because it's 2020 and I'm cool with dudes. So take your dicks, tuck them back. I'm coming for the sack. Oh. A little bit longer, that's a metaphor. Bring in the backups with Eric Hill. All right, you know, I was a little horny when I made that one. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Five months of quarantine, I guess masturbating daily wasn't enough. All right, look, I got one more intro, and this one, this one's a little intense. All right, I don't know if this one's going to work, but let's just see. Maybe this will be the one I use for the show. This is Bring in the Backups with Eric Helwig. All right, kicking off the show with a three-minute bit. Was that long enough? Jesus Christ, is it going to be all that? No. Usually I'm going to get right to the good stuff, guys. All right, we're going to be talking backup quarterbacks on this. Look, I mean, the idea for the show, everybody thinks about Tom Brady. You think about Drew Brees. You YouTube these guys' names, you get thousands of hits. Nobody writes about the guy that started two games for a 1-15 team in 1987. That's what this podcast is for. All right, when you Google that guy and you're like, what the hell is up with that guy? Is that guy, is he under a bridge in his Jeep with a gun? What is up with that guy? This is the podcast for you. And a lot of my friends, I'll be honest, when I told them the idea for this podcast, they were like, oh, Maybe you should do it like it's backups for all sports. And it's like, yeah, when you do your fucking podcast, I'll, I'll subscribe to that. You make that. This is about quarterbacks that are two and six in their starts lifetime, all right? And I thank you guys for being here on the first episode. Holy shit, we did it. I bought the podcast equipment. $700 for the Roadcaster Pro. I'm not going to turn this into an ad for the Roadcaster Pro, but it's an amazing piece of equipment. And it was sold out, probably because right around April 1st, every comic I know started Googling home podcast setup. So I had to buy this one on eBay. I think it was assembled in a rack. Probably did a couple Al-Qaeda podcasts on this. Now it's in my home to talk about backup quarterbacks. But I'm glad it's here. I'm glad I can be bringing this to you. And who's our first one going to be? How about the greatest backup quarterback of all time? Of course, I'm talking about Coy Detmer. My man, Coy Detmer, drafted 1997, lasted in the league till 2006, started, you guessed it, eight games. Eight games in nine years. Love me some Coy Detmer, man. Listen to this. Ten touchdowns, 14 interceptions in his career. That doesn't sound good, but keep in mind, every time he scored a touchdown, he has the greatest touchdown celebration I've ever seen. 
an unbelievable touchdown celebration from Coy Detmer. I, mean, I fell in love with it. It's the, the, the whooping stick, I believe it's called, which can best be described as, I guess, pulling a sock out of your pants and whipping your penis. That's kind of what it looks like. And Coy Detmer was famous. I remember the first time I watched the guy playing quarterback, 1998, playing against the Packers, against Brett Favre, a Hall of Fame quarterback. The Eagles are losing, throws a touchdown, runs out to midfield, looks Favre in the eyes, mimes pulling a sock out of his pants and whips his penis at Lambeau Field. That's some moxie, man. I fell in love with him then. I was 13 years old watching that. I was like, this is my guy. Eagles need to build a team around him. Which obviously this is why I, I, I'm not any, I have no experience in football. That's why I would say something like that. They drafted McNabb the next year and had great success. But whatever, this guy backed up McNabb and did a great job. And this is going to be a celebration of his career along with me ranting a lot. So that's what we're here for. If you don't like this, if the first seven minutes of this podcast have made you want to put a gun in your mouth, turn it off now. It's not getting any better. This is me. It, I'm staring at a wall talking. Coy Detmer was a quarterback in Texas, Mission High School. His dad was the coach. This guy got away with some shit at high school parties. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. It, it, You've seen Friday Night Lights. You know what's up. One of my favorite things about Friday Night Lights is they they cast 35-year-old hot actresses to play 16-year-old kids. Not good. Michael B. Jordan is in the fourth season. He's playing like a junior in high school, so he'd be what, like 16, 17? On The Wire, he plays a 15-year-old, but he's actually 15. Look at Michael B. Jordan in season one of The Wire. That's 15-year-old Michael B. Jordan. He looks like a kid. Look at him playing that age on Friday Night Lights 10 years later. He looks like Idris Elba. He looks like the guy that killed him in The Wire. Spoiler alert. Comes from football family, too, my man, Coy. Ty Detmer. Who doesn't like a kid brother trying to catch up to his older brother. I mean, that's if that's not the story of Coy Detmer's life, what is? I mean, his brother is a backup quarterback for 14 or 15 seasons. It's hard to be a more successful backup quarterback, but somehow Ty Detmer still beat his little brother doing that. I got I got a lot of love for someone that's emotionally chasing after their brother. There's even like some digital, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was called 17,776. It was like a futuristic novel of what football looks like. And in it, Coy Detmer's mentioned, and there's like a joke about he autographed 42 put footballs and his brother autographed way more. He had to like, somebody had to go find all the Coy Detmer autographed footballs. I, don't, I didn't really get what it, it was like a dystopian. Not, I don't know. You look it up. It's 17,776. It's something that got made that mentions Coy Detmer that was on his Wikipedia page. So I'm lazily mentioning it right now. Man, what a good time to start a podcast, huh? If you're looking for silver linings with, you know, the world ending, it's that I finally got this thing going. Finally. You know, I got to say, I, I find it funny as a stand-up comic in New York for years, how often people would just, like, shit on YouTubers. Now watching all my comic friends try to be YouTubers during a quarantine and sucking at it is just perfect irony. A bunch of, like, filthy comics I've seen in basements for 10 years coming out with happy music. Hi! Welcome to my YouTube page. Dude, give it up. The skill of these, of these makeup tutorials. I used to think these were just idiots. I look at someone on BookTube the same way I look at Madeline Albright. It's the same level of mastery as far as I'm concerned. A lot of comics are trying to do these these virtual comedy festivals too. Those, oh my God, I've been accepted to like four of those now. it's, It's hard to get excited for that. You know, something weird about my material doesn't work as well with no audience, no laughter, and half the audience skimming Pornhub. Maybe that's just me. But I don't think this is what comedy is supposed to be, guys. Make something. Stop trying to shoehorn in stand-up like it's still a thing to do during a pandemic. Of all the things that are going by the wayside, could I have chosen a profession more useless during a pandemic? Maybe if I was a guy that, like, walked around cafeterias coughing in people's mouths. It's tough. This podcast would be good, though. A little bit of an outlet for me. And I feel like I'm doing something right. Kicking up that SEO for Coy Detmer, episode one. 
feel good about that. I like this guy because I'm a Philly fan. Philly fans have a reputation as assholes, which is earned. I'll never forget. My dad's from Philly. He used to take me to games up there. We were a military family, moved around a lot, but that was like a home base just because you know, my grandparents lived there. So every time we go visit them, we'd go see a game at the vet. This is back when they had those stadiums where like, they play like five sports in one stadium. Like They thought that was cool in the 80s to build these like multi-purpose, vacuous circles. My dad took me to a game. I must have been like eight. And there's... There's full fights in the stands. We're sitting up in the 700 Club, which is like getting tickets to amateur boxing night. Dudes are drunk. I I vividly remember full-grown men rolling down the stairs after getting tossed by somebody in a fight. Just mayhem. It was it was just it was crazy to go as a kid. It was a, obviously an error in judgment on my father's part to take me as a child. I'm at a game, and some lady's talking to me, and she's an older lady. When I say older, I mean she was probably like 23, but at the time, whatever. I thought she was 90. She's talking to me. She's asking me about school and stuff. And as we're chatting, there's this dude that had his shirt off with the Mets logo painted on his chest running around the 700 section, just begging for an ass beating. He's coming around the bend. The woman's talking to me. She kind of like catches him out of the corner of her eye and goes, hang on a second, honey. As he walks past, she throws a full beer in his face. Throws a fucking full beer in his face. Then the guy is looking at her. She goes, fuck you, you piece of shit. And then looks back at me and goes, so how's Cursive going? I don't know how you don't fall in love with a city like that that has fans on that level. Just pure sociopaths. I think for that reason, Coy's got a good shot to go viral on this podcast. I'm telling you, I think people like his neck beard. People like the fact that he stuck with the team for so long. He was the holder for field goals. And David Akers had a great career. How much of that was Coy? Probably not much. It's a podcast about backup quarterbacks. We're going to take what we can get. The guy was a good placeholder. Easy to root for a guy like Coy, too, when you're a smaller guy. I'm not that small. I'm 5'9". 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, five, Depending on how I'm feeling, I'll throw a 5'9 in there. Coy Detmer is 6 feet, which is short for a quarterback. He's undersized. The average male height, I believe, is 5'8". Although I have, I have no idea how anybody would know that number. Who's crunching that number? There's like a guy in a room where they just go, okay, here's the height of every man on earth. Just add up those numbers then divide it by 3.5 billion. And you can tell us what the average height of a man is right as those monkeys are finishing up Shakespeare's works. Wouldn't that suck if that's your job and then you get to the end and you realize you forgot Yao Ming and you're like, oh, fuck, that throws it off like two inches. <laughs> How's Yao Ming doing? Is he good? He's over in China. I know he's like in charge of the China basketball or something. Of course, by Chinese basketball, I mean the NBA. Baseball's back for now. How do you have an outbreak in baseball in the first three days? Baseball's the one sport where like you, you think they could play in a virus because they're not, they're not doing shit. Watching a baseball game is like people watching. It's basically the same. It's like watching your dad go to work. Think about a baseball game. The average baseball game goes about seven or eight hours. They're only doing about 12 minutes of actual work in that period. The rest of the time, they're just pretending to do shit. Backing up the shortstop. Dude, that's like watching somebody go to an office job. It's like watching you go to your office job if you did steroids or in the 80s, you know. Coke. I read this book, Up, Up, and Away, about the Montreal Expos. The, the story could have been all the Expos did Coke for 10 years. My team's the Phillies, too, and they, they, had, a, they had an outbreak. My second favorite team's the Royals. No outbreaks there. Third favorite team is, uh, I, I don't know. It's up, up in the air. I'm on the West Coast, now. I want to watch some baseball that doesn't start at noon. Something in my time zone. I'm not going to go Dodgers. I'm not a front-running douchebag if... You know, bringing the backups is an evidence of that. I want a team that's an underdog. So I think I'm going to go Padres. I was lukewarm on Padres, but once they change their uniforms to poop and piss, I'm in. Brown and yellow, tough color scheme to make work. But, I mean, how do you go wrong? How are you not going to root for a team that sucks, that's never won anything, and their colors are poop and piss? I'm in. Padres, 2020. 
I'm a little angsty. I didn't go on my bike ride this morning. I've been going on bike rides. Just you got to get the energy out some way. People are like, how are you and your wife handling the the quarantine? I'm like, I go on a five-hour bike ride every day. I put on a full face mask, and I ride by people that are homeless and give them the peace sign like I'm in the fucking purge. That's what I've been doing. Crazy. I want you to know, too, for this podcast, I tried to book every receiver that Coy Detmer ever threw a touchdown to. There's like eight of them. I really tried to get in-depth. I wanted someone to be like, what did it feel like to catch a pass from Coy Detmer? I got close to one. I almost got Dietrich Gels on the podcast. He caught one in the 99 win. Coy's only start in 1999 was against the Patriots. Love this game. I put this right up against his 2002 Niner game, which we'll get to. This Patriots game is way underrated. Let me tell you why. First off, he went 10 for 31 passing, which is so perfect. He went 10 for 31. He threw three touchdowns, 21 incomplete passes. Three touchdowns means three separate whipping your dick celebrations. Eagles won by like 10 points. I think Drew Bledsoe was the quarterback back then. They had like 13 turnovers. The Eagles should have beat them by 70. But this is like a 2-14 and 14 horrible Eagles team. So they squeak it out with Coy Detmer in there, throwing balls two feet in front of receivers, but connecting on three deep passes. I'm telling you, man, it is a beautiful game to watch. And it's a quarantine. I know y'all have nothing but free time. I'll put a link in the YouTube description so you can watch it. I'm going to send you to like 13 three-hour videos, and you can all catch up and be a bringing the backups completist. But this Eagles-Patriots game, where the Patriots needed a win to go to the playoffs. They needed it. Eagles took it from them. Coy Detmer took it from them. Hell yeah. Unbelievable game. Unbelievable in Detmer lore, as far as I'm concerned. This guy had great games in college, too. He went to Colorado. I think that's a good football school. I don't know. It seems like they'd be good, the Buffaloes. You know, I expect him to beat Alcorn State by 40. Played at Colorado. Did well. Came to the Eagles. Sat out there for the first season he was with the Eagles, 97. His brother was on the team. So Ty Detmer was a quarterback and Coy Detmer on the same team which I guess is good. If you get along with your brother, it's fine. But, you know, if you're one of these families that you can't shut the fuck up at the dinner table about your politics, what's that got to be like? I'd be fine with my brother on a team. I'd get along with him. I cannot have my dad as a coach, though. That would not turn out well. I don't know what to say. When I was a kid, a lot of my identity was thinking the exact opposite of whatever my father thought. That's changed a little bit now. As you get older, I think we'd get along better. But in my 20s... He'd be like, throwing out. I'll be like, I'll just, how about I just take a dump in my pants and run to the back of the end zone for a safety? I would just say the opposite shit of what he's calling as a play. That would not work. But if I could be a quarterback now at the age of 34, a grizzled veteran who's starting to understand my father, as life wears me down, I'm starting to see some of his anger. It's starting to reveal itself in me. I could play for my father. One thing I like about Coy Detmer the man stayed with the Eagles his whole career. You got those backups, you know, the, you know, you got a Josh McCown who played for all 32 teams. But then you got the backups that found a place and hung out, knew the system, accepted their role, did it well. Coy's one of those guys. Now, when you look at his Wikipedia, this, I, you know, I should petition whoever edits the Coy Detmer Wikipedia, wherever that power source is in the world. I got to find it. Because he has on there that he was with the Vikings in 2007. Bullshit. He was on the practice squad. Never played in a game. He was there for like four days. The starter got injured, and the old Eagles offensive coordinator gets Detmer to come throw passes in practice, and then they cut him as soon as the guy's healthy to play again. That's not being a Viking, all right? He's an Eagle. His Wikipedia should say Eagle for life. That should be all it says, actually. It should be Eagle, the number four, life. People are like, when was he born? They're like, you don't need to know that. You need to know Eagle for life. Get that Viking shit off of there. Why is there still a team called the Vikings? Can somebody explain that to me? Very PC world we live in, but somehow Vikings has just slid right under everybody's... <laughs> like, who are the Vikings? Rape and Pillage isn't a WWE tag team, all right? That's a way of life for these Norwegian monsters. And now they're like little kids dress up and think they're cute on Halloween. I'm just saying... <laughs> I got a friend who's from Norway. This is a true story. And... 
we're at dinner. He like moved back to Norway and then came back over to the States for some business thing. We're all hanging out. He's like, yeah, hey, when you guys come visit me, you know, you should, you should come by my town. There's like a comedy theater and they got this cool museum with all these Viking ships. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I got family from Germany. I'm like, well, you don't show around your stuff. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, the Viking stuff. These are terrible people. He goes, oh, no, no, of course. No, you're right. Yes, no, the Vikings were, they were terrible people. But these boats are really cool. You still want to check out these boats. Like, it just went right over his head. Take a look at that, NFL. Let's change the Vikings to something more appropriate. The Minnesota drag race. Something we can all get behind. I hope this podcast bumps Coy Detmer up a little bit. He deserves it. Right now, he has zero digital footprint, which is perfect for this show, by the way. That's why next week we're going to be interviewing the fucking Lindbergh baby. We're just going to try to get people in here. You know, Bigfoot, week three. Just let's get people in here who haven't been seen. They get seen twice a decade, and that's it. And I'm kidding, of course. Coy Detmer, I think he's teaching uh, or he's coaching at his high school alma mater right now. They're doing well. He's back in Texas, back in Mission. They're the Mission Eagles, which I found out. Eagle for life. Do I need to say anything else about this? He's an eagle for life. Get that Viking shit off of his Wikipedia. He had a victory in 98 against the Rams. 17-14 Eagles win. He beat the Pats in the game we talked about. Then we've got the 2002 game. And look, we do have an interview this week. It's going to be with Liz Galalis, my wife, who's amazing. Could not give less of a shit about football. Generally speaking, when I try to talk to her about football, after 20 seconds passes, it looks like someone who took five Tylenol PM and is trying to stay awake. Like, she can't, it's physically impossible for her to stay in the pocket of the conversation. She starts to drift, and I'm like, all right, we got to stop. I have a 15-second window to get a football point across if it's imperative to make. Otherwise, it's not worth it. But she's on the podcast, and she does her homework. She watched the 2002 Coy Detmer San Francisco 49ers game. This is the Coy Detmer game. So because of that, I'm not going to talk too much about it in the opening here. But, man, it was it's a game to watch. It's obviously it's the game for Coy Detmer fans. And if you haven't watched it, like I said, I'll be sending you in the direction of that video. What I'm suffering from right now, and I'm going to be real with you guys for a second, I'm, I have something called imposter syndrome where I'm like, this podcast is a piece of shit. This can't be good. There's no way this is entertaining for people to listen to. But you know what? Here's the thing. It might be. I could be wrong about that. This could be a gem that people are excited to listen to. So you know what? I'm not. I'm going to give myself some credit here. I'm going to say follow us on our social media. We got Backups Pod on Instagram. You can follow my YouTube page, just Eric Helwig on YouTube. You'll find it. Put in the comments right in there. Rate, review, subscribe us on Apple Podcasts. Let me know what you think. Unless, of course, you think something less than a five-star review, in which case, do not let me know what you think. Keep it to your fucking self. But if you like it, let me know what you think. And if you don't like it, you can, you know, email me with some pointers. You know, on second thought, do not email me. I don't want pointers, all right? This is my podcast. I fuck, I'm, I bought, it's $700 for this goddamn roadcaster. I'm going to do this for at least six months. All right, six months to see if this thing builds. And if it does, great. And if it doesn't, yeah, you know, there'll be some stuff out there on the internet. Definitely less embarrassing than the comedy I was putting out in 2010. Holy shit. Thank God I posted every horrible comedy sketch video I made in 2010. Nothing like giving people a sea of mediocrity to swim through to find your stand-up. But this will be good. It's a hel- I feel like it's a healthy thing to do during a quarantine, right? What else do I have to do besides talk into this microphone for one hour every couple weeks, do some editing, put my mask on and walk my dog, wearing my mask outside. Are you happy, liberals? <laughs> so crazy that the mask thing is considered liberal. I always think it's weird that you can ask somebody one question, hear how they answer, how they feel about a topic, and then just guess what they think on the next 20 things. That's what politics is now. It's like it's just teams. I don't let myself be boxed in like that, all right? I am for the Second Amendment, I am pro-choice, and I think we should stop neutering dogs, all right? I'm all over the place. Yeah, I said it. Stop neutering dogs. Puppies are cute. Just let them have puppies. Then when there's too many, we hunt them. (laughs) Just put on the mask. Jesus, we want this to be over, don't we? It doesn't got to be a political thing. The only time I take my mask off is to eat pussy.
You guys like the cutout fans in baseball stadiums? I love that baseball's solution for no fans in the stadium is identical to Kevin McAllister's solution to try to scare the sticky bandits away. Just a blown-up cardboard photo running on a tiny train track circling the promenade of Cellular One Field. Good for baseball. They're going to solve a 2020 pandemic with some shit they saw in a movie 30 years ago. Just play in an empty stadium. Piping in fan noise whenever they... Just let it be quiet for a second. Sit with the silence. It's not going to be what you want it to be. Evolve. Well, that's going to be the end of me talking for a little bit here, right? But what I do want to do on the podcast, and this is going to happen every week, is we want to be respecting the history of these backup quarterbacks, all right? It's not just the guys that we're talking about in the episode. There's, there's hundreds of these guys. What are they doing? What were they doing? And that's why every podcast we're going to have on this day in backup history. We're going to start that tradition right now. Welcome to the first ever edition of On This Day in Backup History. This week takes us to 1992. Not for a Rand Contra, but for a backup quarterback. Steve DeBerg of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers entered into a bare knuckle brawl at a local Red Lobster when his waiter jizzed in the Cheddar Bay Biscuit batter. In fairness to the waitstaff, the biscuits were still pretty good. All right, and with that, we're going to get to our interview for the week. Now, the person we have on the show is incredible, very funny writer, actress. You've seen her on The Daily Show. You've seen her on The Joel McHale Show with Joel McHale on Netflix. Please enjoy the interview with Liz Galales. But only technically. This is our second go at this because Eric was in a bad mood. Well, let's say why I was... Okay, welcome into the show, Liz. Thanks for coming into uh, bringing the backups. You're welcome. Uh, podcast studio. I walked six feet from the couch to our desk. Which is where the studio is. Which is where the studio is. I feel so childish. We did a first take of this and I was in a bad mood because... You, you tell them why I was in a bad mood. I said to Eric that I wanted to record after dinner... And then we ate dinner, and then we sat down here, and then I was like, "Oh, this is, I sh- we shouldn't be recording this after dinner. I'm very gassy," and that made him mad <laughs> because I wanted he to. Re- I'm fickle because I wanted to record I wasn't all day. Saying I wasn't <laughs> saying never mind. I'm not going to do it. I was just recognizing that I had a little bit of indigestion oh. after oh. eating dinner. How's yes. your mood now? I've been a little is bit, it better or worse? A little bit better. Okay. Oh, another thing is you named my mom by her I, name I, in the I first podcast. said Eric's mom's real name. That also probably not good. I, and then another thing that I think put me in a bad mood is you're like, just edit it out, which is like hours of work. You, just you kept, said you could bleep it. You no, know, but because we kept coming up with stuff and the solution just edited it out, I was like getting mad, like, oh my God, I'm going to have so much extra work to do. So that oh, was also- You're just in your head about the- That was also compounding the issue. Yeah. So there were multiple things, but- Now we're know, back. Take two. Take two. Take two of uh, my first ever guest on the show in our pilot episode. Do you call it a pilot if it's a podcast? I don't, I know. don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. You're the first person people will hear on this podcast besides me. It's an honor. I hope so. Yeah. I'm glad to have you on. That's nice. I'm definitely in a better mood the second Good. time. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. Good. I just burped. I know. Oh, did, could you hear it? No, I didn't, but I saw your face. Yeah, I tried to hide the burp. Yeah. I had to, I hit a yawn. I was at, I was doing therapy the other day over a Zoom call. You hid your yawn? I, I hid my yawn and my therapist said, you can yawn in front you of me. You can yawn. Because <laughs> she was like giving me advice on how to improve my life. I don't want to be like, ooh. Like, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Eric? I'm going to put my feet on the desk. Put your feet on the desk. Thank you. That's another thing that was making me mad in the first take is she, we, we disputed how close her feet are to my face and mouth. I would say about a foot and a half. Liz said you could fit a five-year-old child between the soles of her you feet could. and my face. They're not that close. Yeah. A five-year-old with like a bone disease where they don't grow. Oh they God. grow to the size of half a five-year-old. A five-year-old. Two and a half feet. I'd say a two-year-old a at the f- most. A, a fine. 
I'm picturing your nieces and nephews. I'm like, maybe. Oops, Oops now I said a name. You said a name. <laughs> and you said a name of a minor. All right. So he will, I will obviously be bleeping out that name, and we will not have that name. Oh, my God. Although, and also the name I and said. And also the name, very, there's only like, very there's only, distinct. There's only three of that name in well, the country right hints. now. don't give hints. Don't give hints. All right. Take three, <sighs> starting His now. His name is Rasputin. <laughs> I have a nephew named Rasputin. Kind of close. So let's talk about the the YouTube video that you watched with me the other day, which I was I was I was really genuinely surprised that you wanted to watch it with me. Of course, I do my homework. You are a hard worker. Yeah. And even for a podcast hosted by me, I wanted to bring my A game. That's a sports reference. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. I feel like it's more of a school reference. A. Oh, that's probably right. But it says it has the word game <laughs> in it. I'll give that to you. Yeah. You. Uh, what did you ask me the other day? You said, uh, "Do quarterbacks get assist in football?" Yeah, I said I didn't know if there were assists in football because we were watching Coy Detmer, two thousand two Eagles, playing the Forty ers and he threw a pass, and then the other guy got a touchdown. And so I was like, is, does that count as an assist? Is that an assist? And Eric was like, no, it's a touchdown. I was like, but did, does Coy Detmer get the assist? I didn't know that, like, both people get the touchdown. Yeah, the, yeah, the receiver was Todd Pinkston, who's a very skinny receiver the Eagles used to have back in the early aughts. Yeah, Pinkston gets a touchdown, and Coy Detmer gets Say a— Pinkston? Pinkston. Like, pink like the color? Pink, the letter S, and then T-O-N. Pinkston. Pinkston. Rod Pinkston. Todd Pinkston. Uh oh, you call yourself an Eagles fan. <laughs> yeah, I momentarily <laughs> said the wrong name of a player from 20 years ago. I remember everything about. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought that because we're watching the Last Dance, so all the sports terminology that's in my head is basketball. Yeah, and that, and when you said that, I thought that made a lot more sense because we are watching the Last Dance, and it's engrossing. And if you're not a huge sports fan, it's very reasonable to assist uh, to assume yeah. the terms just go from sport to sport. Yeah, I also played soccer when I was a kid, but I understood assists You get assist, and you get, you get assist in basketball. Yeah, assist in you, soccer. Baseball, there's baseball there's assist. There's baseball assist? Yeah, if you're in the outfield. I guess anybody could get it, really. It's like a defensive assist. Like if you throw the ball and somebody's out at a base, oh, that's an assist. Oh, interesting. Are there assists in hockey? Yes, there's assists. Okay. Goals assists. There, there's no offsides in football. There, there, is, offsi- there, there is offsides, offsides in football. In football. How? So there's a line of scrimmage. This is fascinating for your audience that already understands the game. <laughs> Let's keep <laughs> talking about All right, the we'll basics move. of it's football. A very good point. We'll move on. Look. None of this is making the show. <laughs> Why wouldn't This that? is a terrible first episode. Who? Great. For let's, 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 bringing in the bag. Let's make sure we say that every five minutes, how horrible <laughs> we feel saying, about the content. I'm just saying, if a new listener stumbles upon the podcast... They're going to be like, what the fuck? I thought this was about football. We can talk about we football. We some shrill well, chick. <laughs> well, if we get random sports fan, you're going to be getting called a lot worse than a shrill oh, chick. I know. We know that from yeah. other things we've done online. Yeah. What Should we tell the listeners can, what my yeah. worst Yeah, you can tell them. comment was? Eric and I were in a YouTube video and somebody- Quality content, by the way, <laughs> which we won't name, the, we won't name uh, what, what it was. Somebody commented- she looks like her hand jobs are boring. <laughs> Which now, with years of perspective, very funny insult so to my wife. Very funny. funny. Yeah. Clearly, that person is eleven and thinks a hand job is like <laughs> the apex of sexual contact. So here's what happened. I told I'd sworn off going into the comments before we started doing this project that was going to have thousands of people watching it online. And then in a moment of weakness, I was like, I wonder what people think about the Eric and Liz comedy team. The first thing I see is the hand job thing. Look at the guy's name. Find him on Instagram. It's not a 13-year-old guy. It's a man with a family. He's got a wife and a daughter. (laughs) And I'm like, all right, we have to defend my honor. Defend defend the honor of my soon-to-be wife. I like to think I knew you were my wife at that point, even though we we had You were against marriage. So I write him. And I'm like, look at you with your, your your own wife, your own daughter. You're you're a pig. 
you would say that to a woman you don't even know. Like I, I just I just white knight the shit out of it. I'm like I write him like thirteen paragraphs of what a monster he is. As soon as I hit send on it, I'm like, why would I do that? That was a huge like I feel like all the feelings are like, oh, I've like opened up a, a world of something I don't want. Four months later, he writes back, "Who's this?" And that was it. Huge waste <laughs> of a huge Not waste worth of my the energy. Emotional energy. Do, yeah. I, do I give boring hand jobs? I don't give hand jobs. I'm not 12. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do you? I mean, you've uh, they've they've been sprinkled in over the years. Yeah, well, sure. They're fine. Yeah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> fine. Uh, well, yours are yours are great. Yours are the best. No, they're fine. Nobody uh, other hand. No jobs adult I've had. man wants a a hand job. Yeah. Koi Detmer. Oh, tell me about the things that you found compelling about Coy Demer from somebody who doesn't watch a lot of sports. So what did you like about him? What didn't you like? He's kind or- of a weirdo. We talked about this in our first take, but they yeah. were doing like, fun fact about Coy Detmer is he goes to Target and he buys a new outfit from head to toe, socks, shoes, underwear, everything. That's the only thing he wears during away games. Yeah, and I thought that was a pretty baller move. I thought that he probably smells pretty bad. Because Eric was also like, he only brings his the clothes on his back and his toothbrush. I'm like... He's quirky. He's a quirky backup that's quarterback. That's unhygienic. Like, he's not washing his clothes every day. What about his deodorant? First off, he's an NFL football player. He, he probably can get his clothes laundered for him. <sighs> he's sure. in a nice hotel. What does he wear to bed? It probably just sleeps naked. But then he... Oh, well, there's probably a rope in the hotel room. Oof. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're just working through Coy Detmer's... Routine here, and it's making know. more and more sense. He's also never having to check bags. He's never losing That's shit. Fine. He brings his playbook. He brings a toothbrush. He knows what he's working That's on. That's fine. Working on the playbook. Okay. And one of the reasons he did so well in that game is the fact that he was he was drafted by the Eagles in 1997. That game was 2002. So he was on the Eagles for one, two, three, four, five, six seasons. He probably knows the playbook back and forth. Yeah. And the fact that a guy six years into the league is still only bringing the playbook with him on the road, that's why they, they were saying it in the broadcast. They're like, the Eagles don't have to shorten up their playbook to put their backup in. This guy probably knows the plays better than anybody else on the team, even it's though he never like plays. Understudies. Look at that. We, we found the connective thread yeah. to your life and mine. Are there, do backups play multiple positions or are there only like backup quarterbacks? There's not going to be like a backup that. A backup quarterback. A tight that, end and a quarterback. Probably not a tight end and a quarterback. That could have been Tim Tebow if he was less stubborn. But, uh, I mean, Cordell Stewart slash, you would say that for years. Yeah. He was the backup quarterback in Pittsburgh, but he would sub in at running back or receiver, and he was just a, an incredible athlete. Again, great discussion for your audience. I don't think that people would know that right off the bat. Here's here's something they wouldn't know. Cordell Stewart was the starting quarterback at Colorado right before Coy Detmer. Making ties all this second take is way better than the first yeah. take. You were also mad at me because I said women don't like football because they're not socialized to like football. Yeah, maybe chicks just don't like football as much as dudes. Let's not get back into Let's it. Not get we're back gonna into fight it. again. Let's not fight about that. But I think I have a point. <laughs> you think it's possible there could be young girls that are really interested in football yeah. but they get socialized out of it. Yeah. Here's my olive branch to you. I wouldn't ever want to do that to any kid. Yeah. If the kid's into something, you want to support it. The point I was making is like, how many family gatherings have you been to, like Thanksgiving, and all the men turn on the game, and the women go, mm, football. The men are talking about sports, and then they walk into the kitchen. What's the phrase that they that they say? They go, uh, they go. Um, is the sports ball match on? Like they ironically they like pretend that say that they don't know how to say it. Heard the word football before? Oh my god! It's not just chicks too. Not it's just also anybody that doesn't like. Also, male improvisers. Anybody that thinks they're superior for not liking organized sports. Anybody who can't let a moment go without it being about them. I'm going to leave the pregnant pause on. The conversation is dwindling. Coy Detmer. What a guy. What do you got to say about I him? I did. No, I want to talk, talk about the moment where he falls backwards from his chest bump. Yeah, you laugh pretty hard. It's so funny. It's delightful. He gets a touchdown. A teammate tries to chest bump him, and he just, like, completely goes flying backwards. Yeah, he's a little guy. It's very cute. I'm sure that's how he wants to be <laughs> referred to as well. It's adorable. And then it was tragic when he broke his elbow. Yeah, he well, he, yeah, dislocated. He, he was dislocated he was it. able to play as gruesome as that injury looks. 
the injury he suffers in that game, you're like, they had probably had to amputate his arm or something. He's kicking his legs. He's spazzing out the entire teams from you both sides. You amputate an arm if it's just broken. Talk to Alex Smith from the Redskins who almost died from breaking his leg really? last year. Did it get infected? Got infected. Well, that's what I'm saying. It has to get infected. Well, it just has to break. If it's just a break. But if it breaks through the skin and you're like, Ugh. at that point, the infection is all about what's on the skin. And if you're playing football, you're Ugh. on grass. There's dirt. There's sweat. That's what happened to Alex Smith. It's he almost, literally almost died. I mean, that's, that's what Snarly. I'm saying. Is when you watch that Coy Detmer injury... He's spazzing out like yeah. the bone broke through his arm. So the fact that he was ready to play five weeks later, even though he ended up not playing because the other the backup to him ended up playing really well, it's crazy to watch how bad that injury looks and also just think of the Shakespearean tragedy yeah. of waiting for six years for your chance to start for a good team in a meaningful game to crush it, get injured, and then never really have the opportunity. It's his again. moment. Some people don't get those moments. Yeah, but still, I honestly, in some way, it's worse to play three quarters of a game and start, and you're like, this is it, it's happening, and then it's just snatched from you right away. How's that worse? I the don't never know. getting to do it? The never, because on some level, because then you don't know what you're missing. You don't get your hopes up, you know? You kind of, at some point, yeah. if you never get to do it, you're kind of resigned to the fact that you'll never get to do it. But to be doing it and be doing so well. It's better to have the taste. You have to think, 2002, Coy Detmer is probably 28, 29 years old. He's been a quarterback starting in high school from when he was 14 years old. He's been working for 15 yeah. years for that chance. To get a I chance to right. do it on Monday night. To have I like, didn't take much convincing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're right. I guess that's right, well, cool we'll, we'll, we'll to get to do it that one time and feel that. One, still, ugh. 18 for 26, 230 yards, two touchdowns, plus a rushing touchdown. Can't write that. You just yawned. Are you, are you almost done? I, I heard Gordon crying in the background. How am I going to keep going after we hear that? Our lovely dog Gordon needs assistance. We locked him in the bedroom for take two because take one, he's rustling around, distracting my guest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. We'll say goodbye or something. Why were you getting all I don't quiet know. on the podcast? I don't know. I lost steam. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god. I'm sorry. Right, I guess we'll we'll cut it early then. I, <laughs> Thanks for having me on. This we'll is see, fun. See you on take three. Oh my god. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the show. Please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Or if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Find us on Instagram at BackupsPod. To keep up with me, follow my social media and hop on my newsletter at erichelwig.com.